Ain't got no shame, nobody knows my name. I'm gonna ride on into the next town. Students, welcome back to American Pop Music. Welcome to a very cool song by a little-known artist. Her name is Imani Coppola. And the first thing that stands out from this song is this wonderful hook. It's repeated over and over. Maybe a little too much for you, I know, but that hook is actually taken from a number one song from 1966, a song called Sunshine Superman. Sunshine came softly through my window today. By a British guy named Donovan. Donovan was kind of a British folk singer. He was a friend of the Beatles. And this song was a hit in the hippie era of the 1960s. So it has a very psychedelic rock flavor to it. And using it in a song 30 years later, the artist borrows some of that hippie spirit nostalgia for that 60s era. So this is a cool introduction to hip hop, a genre that is based on beats and rhymes but also borrows very heavily from sampling old songs. When you use a sample in a song, you're using a bit of the track to transfer some of the good feeling that people had for that song when it was a hit. And you transfer it from the old song into your song. I'll give you a couple of classic examples. You know Queen, right? Freddie Mercury. Another one that's disaster. Put it on. That bass line is from the song played by uh, John Deacon, a member of Queen. But John Deacon got that bass line right from the 1979 disco hit. So that's a famous example of borrowing. Not, not exactly sampling, because Queen didn't take part of the recording of Good Times. They just copied the uh, bass line. A famous example of sampling comes a year earlier. The very first hip-hop rap record ever recorded was called Rapper's Delight. Listen to the bass and drum instrumentation behind the rap here. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. See, I am Wonder Mike and I like to say hello. And you can tell that's exactly the record. And that's what the first hip-hop artists did. The DJ played these songs in segments. You know, they, they, they looped them. And then the MC would come and spit rhymes over the beat. Hit me! Huh! Now what you hear is not a test. I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. See, I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello to the black, to the white, to the red, and the brown, to the purple and yellow. But first, good times. Good times. so sampling was a part of hip hop, yeah, from its very beginning. Using it borrows some nostalgia, and it's done to create textures of sound in songs. So. Back to Imani Coppola's song. Because of its sampling, we know that this song is a hip hop song. And the singer raps through the verses and sings on the chorus. So it's hip hop with a light touch and it's got a little bit of quirkiness to it. You know, in the break toward the end, you hear this violin. I mean, that's really unique. You wonder, well, what, what's a violin doing in this song? Well, I did some research and I found out that Imani Coppola is from a musical family. Her dad was a jazz performer and she was classically trained on the violin as well as the piano. And here's a cool point. She was 19 years old when this song became a hit. Okay, a quick note. What is rap? Well, there are two answers. Number one. It's a musical style. We can say Kendrick Lamar, Jay-Z, Eminem, and Cardi B 
write rap songs and perform them. But, number two, rap is also a vocal style. It started with hip-hop, but now it's crossed into every genre of music. I mean, even Taylor Swift does a rap in Shake It Off. So there's, there, there's a good example of rap vocal style in a pop song. In fact, rap has become so mainstream, it's crossed over into country music, too. And country music is the most white form of music in America today. So, Legend of a Cowgirl, what's the song about? It's a great statement of female independence. The woman in this song is a badass. She's a woman who's as strong and independent as any man. Now, I choose to use the word badass to describe her because I found a great definition of the word badass for you. Are you ready? A tough, uncompromising, or intimidating person. And she is that. I mean, she's a woman who will choose her man. She doesn't wait around to get chosen. She's going to steal their hearts. She's never going to settle down. She's the woman with no name, no shame. She is going out to see the world, and you can't stop her. Now, these are pretty big words for a 19-year-old girl from New York City. Cowboy is a pretty badass image, right? Cowboy drinks whiskey, does it with his hat and boots on, sleeps under the stars by the fire, shines his gun, right? Well, wait a minute, young lady. That's a man's job. You can't do that. In American cowboy mythology, the rugged individual of American myth is a man, not a woman. And to me, that's the joy of this song. She turns that myth 180 degrees. The tough cowboy is a badass woman. However, there's a dreamy refrain in between the verses that reveals that she's not actually this independent, tough cowgirl badass that she's singing about. She's just dreaming, wishing that she could be that woman. The music video clearly shows us that the singer is not the tough, independent woman that we hear about, but she's just a woman who is fantasizing about her possibilities. And the music video is very cool. In the first scene, you know, she's a tough cowgirl in jeans, taking any man she wants. She's intimidating, right? Then we see her as a queen aboard an alien spaceship with all these hunky guys who who worship her. And finally, we see her as a singer, a star, a commanding presence on her own stage. This music video got a lot of play on MTV when it was released in 1997, and the video made the song an even bigger hit. This video is a big budget production, and it's fun to watch. People enjoyed it. The video doesn't support the song's lyrics all the way through, but it does add greater depth to the fantasy of badassness, strength, adventure, success. So I chose this song for you as our light introduction to rap. Our first song, Miley Cyrus, was a pop song. Our second song was a country song. And song number three is a rap song about a cowgirl. Note that the first group of songs we're studying all have USA or American in the title, except for this song. With the term cowgirl, you know, that's not exactly American, but I think cowgirl is 100% American. I mean, you're not likely to see a cowgirl in Sakae or Shibuya or Paris. If you ever see a cowgirl, you'll see her in America. The New York Times in 1997 reviewed this song, calling it a sunny declaration of sexual independence. And I think that sums it up very nicely. What do you think about the song? Say what you want to say about the song or about this video down below in the comments, and see you next time.
So how we do it? Good time. <laughs> two. One, two, three. Huh. A hip hop, a hip, a hip is in the hip, hip hop. Huh. Watch me. Huh. One.